This morning, smart cities were an important topic. This paper session, named Smart City Tech, intends to give more specific, more specific insights to this topic. Uh, the four presentation will cover, as written on the agenda, the notion of smart tourism and multi-environment, multi-device prototype solutions. That's the first topic. Second topic, the need for smart cities to build a strong relationship between the contemporary reality and the historical heritage. That's not the title, but it's the uh, intent of the presentation. The third presentation will be about how can technical devices like sensors be ingeniously included in smart innovations. And the fourth and last presentation will be about how can one help to facilitate cooperation between administrative, cultural, and commercial people. Let's begin asking Gianpaolo D'Amico for his presentation. Gianpaolo D'Amico is postdoc researcher at the Media Integration and Communication Center of the University of Firenze. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I am Gianpaolo D'Amico and I work for the University of Florence and I will present this project which is called the Multi-Environment and Device Framework for Tourist Experience Smart Cities. Uh, this project is called My Firenze. Um, these are frameworks for um, creating, pro for proposing an augmentation of the travel experience of people in smart cities. This project was um, sponsored by the municipality of Florence in uh, partnership with the University of Firenze. I show you a video. In this video, you can see the. Um, Tourism Information Center of Florence, which is very close to the railway station of Santa Maria uh, Novella, is a center in which tourists come to have information in order to start their trip in Florence. As you can see, it's a very crowded place. That you see, if you stay on the street like me yesterday, just uh, shooting this video, you can see that many people walk down the street, just going from the station to the center of information and so on. This station is one of the first places in which a tourist in Florence start their uh, itinerary. So for us the challenge was this, uh, was to offer to a tourist uh, a travel guide, a service in a formal travel guide that he can use for discovering new places all over Firenze and also to uh, understand where is the location of these places in order to reach for them in a quick way. Another challenge for us was to create, to provide um, a customization of this experience. That's to say the tourist can personalize, can customize his or her uh, trip according to their interest. Anyway, another thing which was very relevant for us was to use the, smart, the advanced smart technologies of Florence. Uh, so for this, we proposed a framework uh, which, uh, which provides a service based on multi-environment and multi-device experience. Um, we, will create, we created uh, two different experiences for the uh, tourists here in Florence. One is inside the tourist information office, when the tourists can discover new places, discover the points of history that he wants to leave, and just doing this, just interacting with some natural interaction systems. The second part of this experience is outdoor, that's to say when the tourist is all around the streets of Florence and he can just take this itinerary that he created in the tourism or information and can update this just, create, just using the smartphone. The architecture of this system is here, uh, you can see. So the first stage of this uh, 
uh, experience is this, that inside the tourism, of his, uh, the tourism information uh, office, uh, people can interact with these devices that I will show you later. With these devices, they can decide what are the places to visit all over the town. So they can create a profile of interest of this, and after that, they can save this profile of interest in their smartphone. So after, in the second stage of this experience, they go all around the city and the streets, and just using their smartphone, they can see again their itinerary. And after, they can customize and receive any recommendation and suggestions about other places to see just based on many um, uh, information uh, systems. The, the application server platform is the one that stays in the middle, is the one that just manages and controls all the data that are exchanged between the tourism or, uh, information office and the smartphones uh, of uh, people. So first, in the tourism, uh, in the office of tourism, you can find for first the first device. So in the first environment, you see something like this, which is a tabletop, is an interactive table in which people can inspect um, many images related to the history of Flores. So in this way, they can know more, hold the um, information, they are potentially interested to visit in the town of Florence. Uh, this is a multi-touch -tech, uh, technology, so many people can interact together with this tabletop, and all the assets they can inspect in this uh, platform, in this uh, display, uh, can be made uh, in, uh, in a collaboration, that to say, many people can interact at the same time. All the images that you can see here are displayed in a high resolution, so people can see uh, the details of all these uh, multimedia assets, and at the end they have an annotation tool, that to say, a tool in which they can sketch and highlight some pieces of this information. After, in the second uh, part of this environment, inside the uh, tourism office information, we have an interactive wall, a very big, as you can see, is a 55 inches display. So people, in this way, they can create the itinerary. So after having the experience with the tabletop in which they know what are the things they are more interested in, after they can create their itinerary because they see a, a map in which they, uh, to which they can interact and they can decide what is the most relevant point of history to visit. Uh, this, um, uh, this application is integrated with Google Maps, so we have updated information in real time about places and about the localization of these places. And also we use QR technology for exchanging data between the wall and the mobile. The last device that w and the, the second environment that we propose for our framework is a mobile application. This mobile application is not a native application, but is a web application. In this way, we provide, we offer people um, an environment in which they don't have to install anything. That's to say, this kind of application works with each smartphone. Uh, here, just having the itinerary that you created with the interactive wall, you can see this itinerary, visit the town, and in each moment you can update your itinerary. We have inside this um, application a recommendation system. That's to say, just moving into information, you receive recommendations and suggestions about other places to visit that are based on the interaction of other people in the platform or based on your like, uh, position in, in the space. And at the end, another, also here, we have a Google Maps integration. Um, content is king. Uh, that's to say, all the information that, uh, all the data that uh, people can uh, see, can view, and can select for creating their itinerary are created by the staff of the municipality of Florence. They have a desktop appli uh, application in which they, in an uh, independent way, they can update all the information. So they can see, they can insert, update, or delete all the points of interest, uh, of interest of the town, just inserting images and other multimedia assets in order to enhance the information and provide a new experience to people. I show you now a video in which I explain all the uh, experience. As you can see, this is the Turing office. I move in the tabletop. 
So from here, I see information divided in different groups related to uh, the history of Florence. And here, I interact with these images. So I can select one image for these groups of information. I can inspect these images. As you can see, I can zoom a lot to this kind of image because they are uh, in high quality. And after, I can make a notation in order to highlight pieces of content. After I can move and I can go to the other uh, device, which is the interactive wall. And here, after having understood what is important for me, I can decide to create my itinerary. So I can see Palazzo Medici Riccardi. I have a look to the most important image of Palazzo Medici Riccardi. I read the text and after I decide to add. That's to say, I add this to my trip. In this way, I have a counter that is showing me how much of my uh, itinerary will be inside the day of my visit. In this way, after I can touch on a part of the interactive wall, I have a QR code, and so I can scan the QR code. Scanning the QR code with a simple uh, QR reader, I save all my data, all my itinerary in my application. In this way, I can see the itinerary that I created, I can move all around the Florence city, and I can decide what is the most important po point of interest that I want to visit. And after, I can also have recommendations on this, suggestions on other places, and I also can change my itinerary if I am interested in other things that are all around me or that are suggested by the system. Uh, conclusion of this work and that this framework is uh, currently in a testing stage uh, in the office uh, of the tourism here in Florence uh, and it will be public it will be launched, um, I guess, in two months, maybe in April. Uh, anyway, this project is part of a bigger project, which is the Social Museum and Smart Tourism uh, project, which is funded under the cluster program of MIUR. And nothing is, um, I hope to invite you in these places when we will open. And I want to thank you, Nicola, Nicola Torpe, who was the developer for the tabletop application, and uh, Simone Tani and Maura Fallani, uh, who is the staff from the municipality of Florence that supported us in this project. Thank you very much. Does anybody, does anybody have questions on uh, this presentation? Yeah? Hi, so um, firstly, I really like the interaction between the, the, the map and tabletop and be able to send stuff to your phone. Um, I guess my biggest concerns are, and have you thought about this, um, the Wi-Fi doesn't work in the city, so any tourist that's coming from outside of Italy will not be able to use the app, um, or won't be able to use ah, the system. Okay. So, so how do you plan to kind of... No, 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 that? inside the app we have an off-live no mode. That's to say, when you, for the first, you trigger your application, this application saves all the data. The first triggering, the first opening of your itinerary for the first time, it will download all the information. So if you open, again, the application when you don't have a Wi-Fi, when you don't have connection, anyway, you can see the contents. Because the contents, every time, you, they are not, not only, each time you open the application, you receive the new data. If you don't have a connection, anyway, the whole data are inside, are recorded inside the application. So anyway, we have a sort of no Wi-Fi mode, offline mode. Including offline maps? Including offline mapping? No, the maps, no. Okay, you can have information about the itinerary. That's to say, you can see the itinerary, you can see the list of all the places that you decide day by day, and also you can see the details. So the, to say the description of all the point of history and the details. Anyway, the Google Maps is gone. Oh, you yes. Should, yeah, you should check out yes, OpenStreetMap. Yeah. You should check out OpenStreetMap and the uh, stuff no. from Mapbox. Yes, we can see this. Thank you. Um, yes, I, I was a little bit also worried about the, the Wi-Fi actually because of roaming charges and everything, uh, if you're a foreigner like me. That, but uh, what I was thinking is, do you have any intention of um, having the tabletop part and wall part accessible on 
um, on the internet because, for instance, you might want to plan these ahead uh, if you're planning your, your visit and you're flying into to, to Florence, yeah. it might be useful if you could have at least an idea of what you want to do. Uh, yes, this could be a, um, a following stage. Uh, the part on the wall is ready for this. That's to say, the, te the technology that we use for this is ready for a co turning in a very easy way to a desktop web application. For the part of the tabletop, it's a little bit different because it's based on multi-touch technology. But anyway, uh, I guess that it's a little bit more work. But anyway, we're ready for this. It could be um, one of our ideas for making an extension of this. Thank you. Uh, do you keep visitor data? Uh, sorry. Do you... Um, um, Encrypt? No, uh, do you uh, store, store the data of the visitors that uh, download yeah. the route? Yes, every, uh, we store um, the wall. Uh, the wall, uh, the wall in application is connected to the application server, and so every time we have an action from people, this is stored, is saved in a database. So all the action of people are during interacting with the wall are saved in a database, in a remote database. And also their names and addresses. Uh, no, 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 the names. This no? is anonymous. Yes, you it's don't anonymous. have to use them. Yes, you so don't you have to insert. Everybody can use this. Let's just say just interacting. It's only the action of people that are uh, saved. The, the touching mm -hmm. gestures and so on, that okay. are saved. Not the names, also because, for example, the QR code can be used by many people at the same time. So, for example, I am a touristic guide, I created the itinerary, and all the tourists are looking at me, and after they can scan all together mm -hmm. in order to have the same itinerary. After, when they move all over the town, they can change the itinerary. So they can start from the, uh, a prototype, let's say, a template of an itinerary, and after they can update according to their interest or, or other things. Yeah, I'm interested because it would be, I think it may be interesting to uh, uh, send these people uh, an email, for instance, and ask them about their uh, experiences with what you have done. Uh, what you have done. Uh, yes, I guess there may be one idea could be, for example, to make some sort of surveys uh, in the tourist yes. in the tourist office. It could be nice to make a sort of usability tests and so on. Also, m more on the side of a user experience and and to see um, what countries they come from. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Thanks. Thank you. No more questions? I would like to add just something which is very important in your presentation uh, is the fact that you connect, that you connect um, all together um, touch, multi-touch table and a touch wall and um, we may think of kiosk and any kind of in multimedia installation and you connect all of them with mobile application and this is something which is quite new and uh, which is uh, a kind of an example that may be followed by museum, uh, generally speaking. Yeah. I think there is another question, meanwhile. Okay, thank you, sorry. Um, I was um, thinking about this application uh, of interesting points of Florence gives even uh, historical information or only the direction? Uh, no, uh, you have many layers of information. That's to say, in the um, interactive wall, you see images, text, in which the texts are information about the, the history, about many things, about the buildings of the places. And after, in the mobile application, you see more. Ah. Let's just say, in the mobile application, when you go to the point of interest, you see other kind of description, and, okay. for example, a collection of images. Let's just say, we try to optimize the experience device by device, um, environment by environment. Let's just say, with a, with a very big screen like that one, it's not that easy to interact for many minutes. But with the mobile, you interact for more time. So you read more on the mobile than on this kind of place that is the one only to decide where you want to go. Because it's very big and you can see, you can have an overview 
of all the location on a map. Yeah. Anyway, you. the information device by device is different. It's optimized according to the experience of people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And